G'day guys, the Beer Healer here, and I'd like to welcome you to my kitchen today, where we're going to do another one of our beer reviews. Uh, the kitchen is where I pour a lot of my beers, and sometimes I even get out of the kitchen before I finish them. Just thought it seemed like a really good place to uh, review the beer today, and our beer today is the Brewdog Session Pale Ale, the Dead Pony Club. Now I kind of hesitated a little bit there with the name, because this beer has had a couple of different names. It started off as the Dead Pony Club, and I believe it was named by one of the Brewdog's um, beer lovers. And then it became the Dead Pony Session Ale, or the, and then now it's the Dead Pony Club Session Pale Ale. So that's what we're running with it. But if you buy a can that's new or old of this one, it may have a different name on it, and I apologise for that. Now, talking about the Brewdog guys, duh, they are very influential guys in, in the beer industry. You know, there's a lot of influential people in the craft beer industry, people like Grossman, Kosh, Caligione. But these guys, they are from Europe, and in particular, they're from Scotland. Those other blokes are all from America, so these guys are kind of leading the European charge in the craft beer world. Uh, Martin Dickey and James Watts. Uh, who are they, you might ask? Well, have a look up here. This is who they are, and check out those sweet effects this week. I've been teaching myself a bit of Adobe Premiere Pro to try and improve on, on the video quality week by week. So these guys, who are they anyway? Well, they brewed the strongest beer a few times. Each time they brewed the, the strongest beer, someone was kind of beating them, so they upped the ante until at one stage, they brewed a 55% beer packaged inside a stuffed squirrel, of all things. I mean, check it out. These blokes have done everything, really, when it comes to brewing. They've also brewed at the bottom of the ocean, and no joke. They've collaborated with almost every cool brewer around the world, and now I would say they are pretty much brewing royalty. They are just the cool guys of craft beer right now. The beer. So what is it? Well, it's called the Dead Pony Club Session Pale Ale. Why Session Pale Ale and not a Session IPA? Session IPAs kind of seem to be the thing at the moment. Well, this is a lower ABV, so it's not strong enough to be a Session IPA. The boys also say it's not hot forward enough to be an English Pale Ale. It's not quite big enough to be an American Pale Ale, so they describe this as a citrusy hop bomb that rocks in at under 4%. Alrighty, so the Dead Pony Club Session Pale Ale. Let's pour this beast to see what it looks like, eh? I love the sound of a can. Pour it out here. Oh yeah, it's pouring a really nice sort of straw, a little bit of burnt orange kind of colour. Nice, creamy looking, off-white head. Yeah, that's not a bad looking beer. Nice colour, can you see that? But if I, uh, I might hold it up to the light for you so you can check it out, hey? Yeah, look at that, that looks sensational. Really happy with that. But uh, yeah, it really does come through with the colour. Now being that this is a Brewdog beer, and of course James's approach to uh, smelling this beer like I talked to you about last time, I figured I ought to him to give it a, a shot again this time, so here we go. Hello! How are you? Oh mate, that is a sensational aroma. It's kind of like shoving your head into a, a bowl of fruit salad or something, so I'm getting a bit of, oh, a bit of passion fruit. Citrusy, mango, and oh, that is just sensational. Yeah, no, I'm really, really happy with the way that beer smells. Now, because it smells good, it doesn't always mean it's going to have a big full taste. Like, the smell that I'm getting out of that beer reminds me of some, you know, 5 6% ABV uh, IPAs. But we know that this is a lower alcohol beer, so it will be reduced in taste. But, you know, still, it's starting off really nicely with, um, with these aromas. So let's have a quick taste and see what we get out of it. Oh, that aroma is great. Oh yeah, no, it's still, still packed with plenty of flavour, even though it is, you know, as I said before, the lower ABV, so I'm getting a bit of, probably a little bit of toasty sort of pale malt, maybe some citrusy twangs, pretty dry finish, um, with, with a really nice balanced bitterness, I think. It's sort of um, really good uh, mouthfeel and really nice carbonation, so, yeah, I do. I do really like that. That's a, that's a great tasting beer. So, you know that whole myth about um, low ABV beers having to always be bland and, and tasteless and that sort of thing. I pretty much think that this beer says piss off to those beers because uh, for a 3.5% beer, this has got some fantastic taste in it. Now, um, look, I'm a, I'm a massive fan of, of lower ABV beers that um, still retain a lot of the aroma and the taste much like this one does. Um, as, a, as a father, you know, it's not always uh, possible to be able to drink the, the high ABV hop bombs all night and then still wake up at 6am in the morning when your kids want you to turn on the, the cartoons or, 
or get up and feed them or whatever. So sometimes a lower ABV session beer is really great. And sometimes I just love to have the extra flavour and taste that comes with these rather than the you know, sort of the mega swill lower, lower flavoured ones. So with that in mind, I'd like to take you through my top five lower ABV beers that still retain their taste. Coming at number five on my top five beers that still retain their taste despite being lower in ABV is the Deschutes Brewery River Ale. Now this is a great, clean, refreshing um, beer that's just got a really nice um, citrusy hop aroma coming from the Cascade hops. Just really nice to drink on a summer's day. At number four, we've got the Pirate Life Throwback IPA. Comes in a can. I do love beer in cans, as I've said before. 3.5% and packed with flavour. Coming out of South Australia. If you haven't tried those guys, check it out. At number three, we've got the Stone and Wood Garden Ale. With a bit of a mix of pale and crystal malts. Um, it's been dry hopped with Ella hops, I believe. And so it's really nice and easy drinking and really easy finish. I do like that beer. At number two, we've got the Bridge Road Little Bling IPA. Now, I've spoken about it in my Christmas Advent calendar. I've done the Bling IPA, which is the, the big brother of this one. This is the 3.5% little hop bomb, which just is fantastic little beer. And at number one, it's Rogers from Little Creatures. Now, this beer is fantastic. It's a bit of a hybrid American-English ale that's uh, got toffee and caramel notes with sort of citrus hop overtones, and uh, it's probably almost my favourite beer, despite the fact that it's still only rocks in at 3.8%. So there you have it, that's my top five low alcohol beers that still retain taste and aroma. I hope you uh, go and check some of those out. They are some great beers. Uh, thanks for joining me today in the kitchen here at Beer Healer Headquarters. And uh, as usual, I'll be back again soon. Check out my blog, check out my Facebook, Twitter, all those pipes and get on and um, support me. I'm really appreciative of all the feedback that I've received on my videos and that sort of thing. So thanks for watching again and uh, Merry Christmas and cheers to great beers.